Welcome to this Tutor to You topic video that looks at the McQuenny Food and Water Security Programme, which is an example of small scale sustainable farming. This is part of Paper 2, Unit C, The Challenge of Resource Management. McQuenny County is around 200 kilometres southeast of Nairobi in eastern Kenya, which is an LIC. It is a rural area with a population of roughly 885,000 people who are spread out across lots of isolated villages. People in McQuenny grow a variety of crops, including sweet potatoes, cassava, beans, millet and maize, which is helped by the nutrient-rich volcanic soils. However, the population lives in poverty and faces food insecurity as the climate makes it difficult to grow crops. The region is semi-arid with low and unreliable rainfall, with an average of 500 millimetres of rain a year. This affects food production and that means that crops fail regularly. The McQuenny Food and Water Security Programme is an example of a sustainable small-scale project. This programme was set up by the local community with the support of two NGOs, or non-governmental organisations, Just the Drop and the African Sandown Foundation. They had the aim of improving food and water security in the villages of Musungu and Muwa Methavini that have a combined population of 800, as well as increasing food and safe water to the 463 pupils of Kanyei Oni Primary School. The unreliable rainfall used to mean there were times in the year when food supplies ran low because there wasn't enough water to grow crops, such as the cassava that you can see pictured on the screen. The programme has many different aspects. The construction of sand dams in each village is one of them. These small dams are an example of appropriate technology as they were set up with the local community and are very cheap to operate and maintain. A simple dam is built across a river, trapping the rain where it falls. In around four years, sand carried by the water fills up the area behind the dam, forming a sand dam. Sand dams store water in the ground, filtering and cleaning the rainwater as it soaks into the soil. When the rain falls, it still flows down the river channel, but it is trapped in the sand behind the dam. People can easily dig down to get the water, which is protected from evaporation by the sand, but it also filters the water, enabling them to access a clean and safe water supply for drinking, but also for watering crops and for their livestock. The programme also includes a rainwater harvesting system on the roof of the school, which is another example of appropriate technology as well as a training programme to educate local farmers on sustainable agricultural techniques and an afforestation project to reduce the risk of desertification. The trees will provide shade to stop the soil drying out, roots to bind the soil together and leaf litter to add nutrients back to the soil. The trees will also increase biodiversity in the area and will provide medicinal products that can be used by the local population. So has the project been successful? Well, the sand dams have given people access to a more reliable and safer source of water, reducing the incidence of waterborne diseases and therefore the health of local people. As a result, crop yields have increased and food security has improved, which again means better health for the population. Time has been saved as women and children don't have to spend so much time fetching water, which means they can spend more time doing paid work or going to school. The trees planted around the dams have reduced soil erosion and have improved soil quality, as well as improving the habitat for other plants and animals. Fruit trees have also provided food and a source of medicine. Sand dams are very useful in some areas, however, they only work in places with suitable geology and they must be carefully planned. The McQuenny Food and Water Security Programme is an example of a sustainable strategy to increase food supply. Sustainable solutions have the following features in common. They are small scale. They improve the quality of life for individual communities rather than whole regions or countries. They are easy to manage and they're relatively cheap. They use appropriate technology. These are small projects using basic machinery that is cheap and easy to operate. This is better than using complex machinery that might require specialist skills to maintain. 
These sustainable food projects need to be managed by the local community rather than relying on other people. For example, local people build and maintain them so if they break down, they know how to carry out repairs. Local people also need to be fully involved in the decision making. They need to know what they need to do to improve their food supply and where they're going to build their projects, how big they will be, etc. It's not just telling the people involved what they need. Therefore, there's more buy-in and projects are likely to be more effective. Finally, they will involve non-governmental organisations. These have no government funding and rely on donations. For example, just a drop who's involved in this project. They work across LICs and NEEs to improve water and food security. NGOs are important here as they give local communities the support and the skills that they need to get their sustainable food projects up and running. That concludes this Tutor to You topic video focusing on small scale sustainable farming. Thank you for watching.